Hey, this is Timo from OnlineBuilderGuy.com and today I'm going to show you how to work with Thrive Architect contact form. Now, to get started, uh, create a page on your website and open the site in your, or the website or the page in your Thrive Architect editor and here when you click on the plus sign or the add element button here on the right and scroll down, you should see a contact form element and here you have it. Just drag it onto the page and drop it here and you have uh, a very basic contact form now on the design area of your page. Now obviously you could just leave it as it is, uh, uh, but I just wanted to show you these different options that you can choose from when you are designing a contact form. Um, one thing to note, and something that I actually, I was maybe a little bit confused about this, but I then realized how this contact form works, um, is that whenever you click an individual form field, you get this set of settings here on the left. But if you click between these uh, form fields, so you can see that this whole contact form is being activated, you get uh, a different set of settings. So basically in this view, when you click between the fields and this whole form, form is activated, uh, you get to tweak some very important settings that you need to set before you can publish your uh, contact form. But for instance, if I click any of these individual fields, I can see all these different styling related uh, settings here on the left. Um, very, very basic stuff. I guess really the most important and the most exciting feature that you can either turn on or off is this grouped styling setting here. As you can see this lock, this screen lock. So what does this mean? Well, whenever you are making a change to, a, for instance, to an individual field, a stylistic change, all these styles, all these changes are applied to every one of these fields here. So it's a great way to make, make a uniform look on your contact form. But it's also nice that you can turn off this functionality by clicking this lock icon, it turns into a red unlocked unlocked icon and then you can edit uh, these fields individually. I guess this is really the most important thing that, they can, that you can change here uh, on top of these stylistic changes as well, of course. But let's take a look at the form configuration. Let's say that you want to have a contact form, you want to let the visitor of your website to submit messages to you and then you are reading uh, these messages, these feed mes feedback messages or whatever whatever they may be. Uh, so click between uh, these form fields to activate this uh, whole contact form. And here, uh, let's go through these settings one by one. I'm uh, mostly going to focus on the main options section because it is, in my opinion, the most important one. Uh, what you see here, they are styling related uh, options and you can explore these ones uh, yourself if you want to because this main options is obviously the most important section when you are setting the form. Um, briefly, the template options is the, the option where you can uh, change a template for your website and you can uh, choose from any of these templates here, but let's just keep the default styling what we have already here and let's go straight into the main options. So obviously you can add new fields to your form if you want to. Uh, you can track these form fields into the order you would like to. Um, here the first name is as the last field on this form. Uh, this is just for the demonstration purposes. 
in a real live production contact form, you want to pay close attention to the usability issues. And in this case, you want to make sure that, for instance, the name section on the form is right at the beginning of the form. And then you can turn on and off the labels. Um, once again, this is a usability issue, and uh, I encourage you to keep these labels turned on because uh, it makes it easier for your visitor to uh, use the form and then eventually submit the form. Then you can turn on and off the required marks. They are turned off by default, but when you click this setting here, uh, what you will see here is that you have this red star next to the label. And it basically indicates that this very field is mandatory. Now, where do you actually set the field and whether it's mandatory or not? So you can click this pen uh, icon here, and here you can decide that if uh, if this particular field is required or not. So for instance, in this case, I'm looking at the first name field and uh, the required setting is turned on, but when I click this, uh, uncheck this box like this and click apply, then you will see that the first name is not mandatory anymore and only email address and the message fields are mandatory. But I encourage you to keep these fields marked as required because you want to make sure that when a visitor is sending you a message uh, that all the fields are mandatory. And these are just very basic set of fields. Obviously your contact form could be much more complicated and there you could make decisions whether a, a certain field should be mandatory or not, but in this particular case, since we only have three fields, and I think that these three fields are very essential. Uh, you want to make sure who sent the message, what is the email address of the person who sent the message, and what is the actual message that you just received. Okay, uh, one other thing worth noting is that um, these fields are different, their type is different. So for instance, uh, when I click, uh, actually I didn't have to click this field, but let me just click this uh, email address setting over here. When I click the pen icon, I can see that the field type is email address, and there are some other field types here as well. You have phone number, website, uh, naming related, fields and such things. So they are just related to the um, validation of the form field. So in this case when you have an email address field uh, there is this basic validation uh, basically uh, enforcing that the user is entering at least some sort of valid email address like there has to be an at sign on the form field. Uh, obviously, there are many different combinations of email addresses, and I'm not quite sure how extensive this validation is. My assumption is that it's based on the HTML5 spec. Uh, uh, I, I can't be 100% sure, but this is how I think that this, this thing could be. But anyways, um, it, uh, setting the right field type ensures that you have at least some sort of validation on your fields and it's it's a great way to actually make sure that all these fields are the correct type but this is how you set the field type just click the pen icon here and then you will see these different settings and the field type setting is here right at the beginning okay let me just go back to the first name and put back on the required field and then when you click the email and after submit setup this is very important here is how you define the recipient email who is going to receive this email message obviously if you are building a website for yourself you want to make sure that you have a valid email address here let me just add my own address 
uh, like this. And then you can set the subject line. You can add these short codes to your uh, subject line if you want to, but uh, I would like to keep these things as simple as possible. So uh, let me just change this uh, subject line a bit. My website. It's much easier to indicate where this message is coming from when you have a subject subject that you have defined yourself. And when you click next, then you can choose what happens after the person has submitted a form. Uh, the reload page, mm, I wouldn't use this. Uh, rather, I would either use redirect to custom URL or so success notification. In this case, I will choose the so success notification uh, I think that this this is good selection to have and and from the usability standpoint it makes sense to choose uh, this success notification or the custom URL because you want to make sure that that the visitor knows what is going on after he or she has submitted a form so in this success notification case you will define a message that the visitor then see after he or she has submitted a form. Uh, and obviously you can change this text the way you, you would like. Then you can also set the confirmation email. Uh, it basically means that after a user has submitted a form, uh, he or she will get this email message as a confirmation. And obviously, you can also change this uh, message the way you would like to. And then you can turn on the personalized sender details. I, I haven't actually used this myself, but uh, you can also turn it on or off if you want to. Okay, so click Save. And now you have some basic settings here. Uh, when you click the Advanced, uh, oh, section here on the left and click edit error messages then you can define different error messages that the visitor might get when he or she is trying to submit a form. So for instance if if an email address is invalid so this particular message is being shown and you can set these other error messages on this view as well. Okay um, I think that everything is set. Let me just save my work. And here, what will happen next is, well, I'm saving again and I'm exiting this design uh, area. And let me just click Edit Post and click Update. And now my form is live. Now obviously, and in my case, because I already had this page available, I made some changes and for this demonstration I recreated the form again so I have this update button, but obviously you will have a, a publish button displayed here whenever you create a new page, a new contact form. So uh, the, the publishing process follows the regular WordPress blog post or uh, web page publishing process where you click this blue button to actually save all your changes and make the, the, the current page to go live on your website. Now when you go to this web address or this URL, uh, let me just choose this one and let me just go to this address and here Uh, it's funny that I'm actually using the very same I'm using the very same email address that uh, I'm sending this email to test message let me just click send message your message has been sent thank you and when I go into my inbox 
I should see message from my website. Woo I have this message here on my inbox. And this is basically how this contact form works. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Uh, and I will get back to you with another video very soon. Bye-bye.